within yourself that there's something you want to do, and I believe that all of us were born with a purpose, that all of us have something that we are supposed to do, that all of us have some goodness within us, and that goodness gives us a responsibility to manifest our greatness. And when you know that, you can feel it in your guts, and you know that you're deliberately operating below your potential, you've gotten comfortable, you stop expanding, you stop stretching, you stop challenging yourself. Let me share something else with you. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, but it's necessary. It's necessary that you have it, that you work on it, that you develop yourself, that you go for what is yours in the universe. I have a friend that at the beginning of the year I was in Los Angeles giving a speech and, and I do a seminar teaching people how to become involved in the speaking business and, and also one called Speaking with Power, teaching people how to begin to develop their communication skills. And this friend, I said, I want you to work with me. I called her up. She said, Les, are you sure I can do it? Sure you can. You have a PhD in communications. I don't have that. If I can do it, sure you can do it. In fact, I'm going to give you the support that you need. Here's what I realized, ladies and gentlemen. We only have enough energy to take us to a certain level, but it's necessary that we assemble ourselves with other people who share our vision, other people that can see it for us, to give ourselves a home court advantage. It's necessary that you seek out other people who think like you, who are growing, who have decided that they are not satisfied with where they are. See, I don't believe that the necessity that necessity is the mother invention of invention. No. Necessity, in my opinion, is not the mother of invention. Refusing to accept things the way that they are is the mother of invention. When you decide I'm not going to settle for this, this is not going to be it for my life. I deserve more than this. See, that will start making you do some stuff. See, a lot of people go to work every day miserable, and all they do is just talk about how miserable they are. But they don't do anything about it. So I was telling her that I knew she hated a job with a passion. I said, you can do this. you got more going for you than I have going for me. And we've been going through this for years, ladies and gentlemen. She'd been to my seminar speaking for a living. She brought her husband, and that was one of the major problems that I realized that happened in her life. He couldn't see it for her. So you've got to make sure that you have people in your life that can see it for you, that will encourage you. Non-affirming relationships can hurt you. And I talked to him. I said, you know, I don't have anything to do with, with your marriage. I said, you and I are good friends, and she and I are good friends. And, and I'm not taking sides. I said, but if you can't see it for it, don't tell her that. Just give her some support. What if you're wrong? It's possible, man, that, that if, if I'm doing it, she can do it. Well, you're different. How are you going to tell me that? You've seen her speak. She's got great speaking skills. Don't underestimate her. You don't know. You've got a great woman here. But you see, people who can't see it for themselves can't see it for you. He was happy. So I said, will you do it with me? I said, I'm going to give you the support you need. You can't do it by yourself. I will stand with you. She said, you will? I said, yes. I'm going to make you a part of my seminar. You'll do a part of it, and I'll do a part of it, speaking with power. She said, okay. Three days later, ladies and gentlemen, I got an emergency call at my office. It was from a husband. He called and said, tell Les Brown that Marion is dead. I said, oh, no. When I was flying there to go to the funeral, and I remember the last time that I saw her, and I had some of her papers that I had gotten inadvertently confused with mine, and I took them home. And I was searching through these papers to do one of her works. She was a prolific writer. And what got me, what was so sad that made me begin to cry, was that there were poems that she had started that were profound poems, great thoughts, that she didn't complete. Plays that she had started that she didn't complete. See, that poem was given to her. I can't finish that for her, nor can you. That play, whatever the outcome that she had envisioned, that she had imagined, was given to her. Only her. And that, she's the channel that that was going to come through. You are here, and you are the vessel, you are the outlet for the universe. That you've been selected, there's something for you to do. I believe all of us have some purpose for being here. And as I was going to the funeral, 
And I was reading a newspaper that said that, that millions of people are dying because of, of what they're eating, talking about their diet. And I'm sure that it, it was Marion talking to me, whispering, saying, Les, the next time you speak, say that even more are dying because of what's eating them. The challenges of life come your way. You've got to find ways to increase your sense of self-appreciation because if you don't, you're bombarded with negative stuff every day that beats you down and you will find yourself unconsciously engaged in self-destructive behavior. If you don't program yourself, life will program you. So you want to have an agenda for your life. It's necessary that you have some direction for your life. A friend um, at the National Speakers Convention gave us presentation and it really struck me. He was talking about when he was traveling across Europe, Warren Gresham, and he said at different points, soldiers would wake them up on their journey and ask him the question. And I pose this to you. The question was, where have you been? Why are you here? And where are you going? And that's what I ask you. Where have you been? Where have you been up to this point? You look at your life. You look at what you produce. Is it giving you what you want? Are you living on purpose? Are you living your dream? Are you acting on your ideas? Are you doing all you can do? Have you gotten comfortable? Are you procrastinating? Are you evading your own greatness? Are you surrounding yourself with people that can nourish you? Are you challenging yourself? Are you experimenting? Are you learning something different? Is your life an adventure or is it boring? Where have you been? Why are you here? What brought you here? Investing the time, the money. What brought you here? And where are you going? What is it that you can get out of this session, out of this lecture? That when you leave here, rather than this just being a spectator event, that you got some idea, some dream, that you might have to go back and brush it off and look at it again. And say, I've got to do this. This is my stuff. This is what I'm supposed to do. This is why I showed up. Where are you going with your life? What decisions are you making right now as you look into the future? Are you experimenting to find out what other talents and abilities that you have? See, we're in a time right now. The day is gone where you could just go to college and get out and, and get a job and work 30 or 40 years with job security and retire with a gold watch. The gold watch days are gone. Brand new day, party's over. So now you have got to be multi-talented and multi-skilled. You've got to use all your stuff. You don't know what else you can do. I don't know I can do what I'm doing right now. It's necessary that you stretch and challenge yourself and say, let me see. I start out as a trainer. I'm a trainer. That's what I am. That's what my expertise was in. And then I decided, let me see, can I speak? And then I discovered, hey, I can do that. What if I hadn't tried to do that and just been satisfied with just being a trainer, with a limited vision of myself? And then after training, and then I said, well, maybe I can go into business for myself. And I started speaking, going into business for myself. Well, maybe I could train other speakers and teach them how to go into business for themselves. See, you want to have a backup plan. You want to have other strategies for yourself. In case this doesn't work out, you got something else going over here. You don't want to ever put yourself in a, vision, in a situation where you have a limited vision and you're only using a limited amount of your talents, of your skills, and of your abilities. And I'm saying to you, it's possible you've got some talents, some ideas in you, your ability to do some stuff that you haven't even discovered yet. And I'm suggesting that it's necessary that you get outside of your comfort zone. It's necessary that you develop some new relationships where you can learn from people. It's necessary that you do reading, that you do research. It's necessary if you're already involved in some business that you don't be satisfied with where you are. If you want to make it today, it's necessary for you to constantly look at ways of getting better. Not only is it possible for you to have your dream, and it's necessary for you to challenge yourself to go after it and get better and leverage relationships that can help you get to where you want to go, but it's you. The major key to your reaching your dream, your living up to your greatness, your making your contribution, is you. If the economy is good, fantastic. If the banks are loaning money, that's great. If people are positive, that's great. You don't have any opposition, that's great. But the major key to your making things happen in your life is you. Hey there, I hope you found this video inspiring and educative, leave your comment down for me below if you do.
I would also like you to support this channel by clicking the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up by clicking the like button below, and don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss a video I upload. Until next time, love you guys.